God is good. Okay, so Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Now, uh, I believe it was about a week ago my son preached for me. He was sitting, there he is right over there. And he was talking about how he stopped in the middle of a passage. I think he got that from me. But stopped in the middle of the passage and, and took time to explain words. So this phrase, dear children, is bigger than it looks. In, in uh, Greek, uh, what, what you've got is two different words that are translated into the same statement uh, throughout the New Testament. So one word is the Greek word weos, okay, and the other uh, word is the Greek word technon. Now, technon is translated children, okay, but it's referring to children that are related only by birth, okay, whereas weos is also a child, so it's translated children, but it also means all those that are not just related by birth, but also emulate and pattern themselves after their parents. So, uh, children of God, well, I want to read that to you again. Therefore, be followers of God as dear we us. And walk in love. Now, the word love is, is real big here, too. It's the Greek word agape. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Hallelujah. God is good. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the walk. We're talking about walking in love. Okay, so the word walk is not just talking about moving yourself around in a pedestrian way, but it's, it's talking about your lifestyle and your uh, comportment of yourself through life, how you present yourself to people, which becomes really important when you start talking about the word love. So I'm going to ask you, if you would please go back with me to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Got a passage there about love. We're going to first of all just sort of get a picture of it. Hallelujah. And then we're going to uh, take it apart a little bit. And I'm going to read it to you first in the King James Version. All right. So this is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. It says, Charity suffers long. That's the old English word that has not yet been updated. Uh, it's actually the Greek word agape as well. But I'm going to read it as it's stated. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envies not. Charity vaunts not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeks not her own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Charity never fails." Now, I'm also going to read this to you in the Amplified Version of the Bible and do a little bit more expanding on it. Verse 4 in the Amplified uh, is just translated love. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Now, uh, you know, it's, it's one thing, let's stop there for just a minute. It's one thing to know that you're born of love which is another way, and, and God is love, the Bible says. We're going to read that. In fact, we've already read it to you once. Uh, but God is love, okay? And so when you got saved, you were born of love. You were born of Him. You were born of God. So technically, you are a love person. You get your nature and your character from Him. You're a weos. How many of you are following Him like that? Yeah, you, you can decide. You mean I can decide to do that? Yeah. You, you can say, well, you know, instead of the glass half full, I'm going to uh, call it uh, half empty. I'm going to call it full. Okay. So, love endures long and is patient and kind. Love envies not, vaunts not itself, is not puffed up. Love doesn't 
behave itself unseemly, uh, seeks not her own, is not easily provoked, but th- thinks no evil. Now, this is my own writing, so I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with my own writing. Can't help it, but, you know, praise the Lord. Love rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Now, years ago, one of our preacher friends said to us, you're acting on that, aren't you? And, and we, we said, well, yeah, we're, we're doing our best to act on that. And he said, well, that's the reason why people are taking advantage of you. And then, uh, you know, and I, I realized from him, what he, he wasn't trying to talk us out of it. He was just trying to explain that's what's happening to you. You've become vulnerable, and when people look at what you're doing in love, they think you're a fool. But you know what? We decided, well, we, you know, we're just going to go ahead and let them think what they want to think, because I'm going to walk in love even if it makes me look vulnerable. You know, and then I got to thinking about Jesus, you know, how he voluntarily allowed himself to be crucified. He said, you know, I could have called 10,000 angels, but I didn't. I could have done all of these things to avoid this, but he didn't. So he made himself vulnerable. He looked like a fool to those people who seemed to have power over him. You know, but their power, <laughs> you know, their, their, little, uh, their little power was nothing compared to heaven's power. But he made himself vulnerable so that he could complete his track. He, he needed and had to walk in love, and, and you know, which re, was really giving them the chance to kill him. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Okay, so love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Praise the Lord. So, love will get you there, you know, even when uh, everyone, it, you know, when, they, when people look at you, they say, well, you're never going to make it. You're going to fail. And then what love does is love finds a way through the whole thing. And, and all you really need to do is walk in love. I'm walking in love. You walk in love and you will always succeed. You're not going to fail. Hallelujah. God is good. Okay, so uh, I'm going to ask you, uh, if you would now, to go with me over to Ephesians chapter 4. We were there just a moment ago, and we're going to characterize this. We're going to, uh, first of all, there, there's Fred. He's you and me. He got saved. See, he's been given a new heart, a heart of flesh, okay, and then uh, he's also going to learn how to walk. So he's walking in love. He's a, yeah, he's a born-again, spirit-filled believer. Okay, and he's walking in love until he runs into Sister Sally. And all of a sudden, you know, uh, boom. He goes dark again. This is just an illustration. But it is to show you what happens to a believer. See, though you're born of him, what happens to a believer when you step out of love is it's like the end of your prayer life. The ceiling over your head, this is the way Jesus described it, becomes like brass, which means your prayer life stops which is another way of saying it's as though God has left you. You know how people say, well, God left me? He didn't. You know, it's you that needs to get back with him. That, that's what this is all about. Praise the Lord. Okay, so uh, what Sister Sally did to Fred was she, uh, you know, uh, aside from interrupting his his walk, okay, but she also offended him, hurt his feelings badly, did, did something, she actually did wrong against him, okay, but what he did was he took offense, 
And see, what love doesn't do, love doesn't take offense. So he stumbled and fell. Things got dark in his life. I want to read this to you. This kind of characterizes the whole thing in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. So while Fred was walking along, he, he didn't even notice that Sally was, was there. But she tripped him up. Okay, And uh, he kind of let it fly out of his mouth. And uh, wow, you know, well, he, he didn't commit the wrong, okay? But uh, he did say what he said. And so the devil is standing right there. This is the part that people leave out all the time. But the devil is standing right there. And the devil hears what he said. So what the devil is going to do or attempt to do is bring that to pass in Fred's life. That's, that's actually the reason why everything goes dark with Fred. Okay, but he wants to get relit. Hallelujah. Thank you. Now this might have happened to you. In fact, it's happened to many. So let, let's, let's finish the passage. Let no corrupt communication Proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. I've said a lot of things that weren't necessarily edifying. But you know what? Now that I know what I know about the blood of Jesus, I can take back what I've said that is so offensive. So he got offended at uh, Sally. Praise the Lord. And he went dark, okay? He wants restoration. Well, that will come, okay? But he's going to have to adjust a few things. He's, he's going to have to uh, ask Jesus, first of all, to forgive him so that the blood of Jesus will cleanse him. This is, is really, is, I guess it's like a two-step process. Okay, so you need to ask Jesus to forgive you. And then what Fred's going to have to do is he's going to have to forgive Sally. Well, she's the one that did it. Yeah, that's, that's right. But that, that's irrelevant to the point. Now, uh, this passage talks about even as Christ has also forgiven you. All right, look at verse 30. He says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption. So what happened to Fred is... It, it is though he had no more Holy Ghost, no more God, no more Jesus, nothing. No angels helping him. This is the way it seemed. Because the devil is just simply bringing to pass what Fred said. And so to get rid of that, Fred is the one that's going to have to cancel it. Well, you, you said it. He's going to bring it to pass unless you say otherwise. So what, what a believer has got to learn how to do is ask Jesus to forgive you, which is actually the cleansing that occurs, and then you have to confess it as though it's done. You have to accept it as being done, praise the Lord, because it's instantaneous. I can't do it fast enough. That's better. Still not fast enough. But at any rate, uh, you're washed in the blood of the Lamb. You're forgiven. Okay? And, and then, let's, let's keep reading. Look at verse 31. It says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor. You know, he really got worked up about this. Because Sally really did a thing against him. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, and clamor and evil speaking be put away with you with all malice. So don't forget the malice. See, there is an underlying thing. See, what Fred didn't realize was he still had an attitude towards Sally. And all the incident did was bring out his attitude. So, uh, you know, if, if he allows it to happen, he, he will be able to see something about himself that he never saw before through all of this. He can ask Jesus to forgive him, cleanse him, wash him in his blood. Praise the Lord. All right. 
So if you would uh, look at verse 32, he says, And be kind one to another, tender hearted. Notice that kind one to another, tender hearted. Forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. So remember what it was like for Jesus when he was on his way to the cross. How, you know, as soon as he was condemned to death, they really started pounding on him. Okay. Hallelujah. But even as it went with him, see what, what the passage is saying is you, you need to forgive people. You know, he forgave people on the way to the cross. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Remember that? So he was still forgiving while they were killing him. Okay, so if, if Fred does that, then he gets all his uh, kingdom rights back, and he's back walking in the spirit again, walking in love. By the way, the two are virtually synonymous. Okay? And uh, so hopefully he's not going to get tripped up by anybody, including Sally, so that he uh, goes dark again. Hallelujah. I don't like darkness. I don't like, you know, when it seems like heaven has shut me out. I don't like that. Hallelujah. You mean that happens to you, Pastor Randy? Hey, God is no respecter of persons. It does and can and will happen to every person. So it, it will seem like you're cut off, but you're not. Hallelujah. Okay. Praise the Lord. So if you would please go with me over to 1 John chapter 4. Hallelujah. I got a little, if I'm graced to do this, it's, it's a grace to be able to sing. So I, I'm going to sing a little ditty to you. It's two scripture references that we started confessing when I first got to college. All right, beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. So, beloved, let us love one another, 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Hallelujah. Now, it could be that's the first time you've ever heard that, but, you know, that one is not new. Yeah, it was 1975 in St. Augustine, Florida. It's the first time I heard that. It was, you know, we had this little Bible. Bible I didn't even know what kind of a group it was, but they got together and invited me to come along, and this guy came along with a strumming guitar, and he, he sang that. And, you know, after he finished it the first time, then he started again. Okay. Then he started again. And, you know, after about the fourth or fifth time, I thought, well, gee, you know, there must be a message in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, uh, I also learned the song. So, you know, what I did is I took it with me. Amen. Beloved, let us love one another. So if Fred had, had had that little song and he was singing it when he ran into Sally, he probably wouldn't have had the level of a problem that he had. See, it, there's, there's kingdom things that are designed to help believers get out of trouble. Now the devil is defeated, but what he will do is he'll use your power against you. See, you're the one that has the power of voice. Satan doesn't have the ability or the power or the, or the responsibility to be able to speak in this realm. That's the reason why he's always got to use somebody. So he uses your mouth against yourself and gets you to curse yourself with your own mouth and bring darkness into your life. And then you turn around, and this is what makes it worse, you turn around and say, well, God is blocking me out. 
So you're blaming, on, blaming him for what you did because the devil is just simply acting on what you said. Hallelujah. Is that clear? Hallelujah. Okay, so the, the point of all this is you have a major reference point in your life. It's called walking in love. Now, if you're moving along in your Christian life and you uh, fail to recognize this reference point, it's possible that you're just going to go right past it like Fred did. And uh, he's, he's going to allow things to happen to him that don't have to happen. So that's the reason why God said, look, I want you to learn how to walk in love. You need to learn how to walk in love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Aren't you glad you came to church today? Well, it's, it's, it's a holiday weekend. Yeah, it's, it's grim and glum to some, but then to others, it's, it's an excitement. I thank God for the United States of America. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, yeah, we'll leave that there. Glory to God. I'm going to enjoy my uh, dinner. Amen. All I ask for you to do is make sure you eat a hot dog for me. <laughs> I say that every year. Memorial Day. Praise the Lord. Okay, so a major reference point for the Christian lifestyle is whether or not we're walking in love. Now remember what Jesus said to his disciples right before he went to the cross. He told them, you need to walk in love and people will be able to see you walking in love towards each other. So in other words, this becomes a reference point for them too. You know, they're actually using you as a reference point. And, and they're watching you to see if you actually do what you say that, you're, that you are. Are you a believer? Okay, well then you ought to be acting like a believer. This is the way they look at it. They want to see you prove it. Because from there, you know, they, they might have tried it and without the power, they can't do it. See, but Fred has an advantage. You know, he actually knows the king and he can exercise faith and get things lit back up again which you can do. But people in the world, all they're going to look at is you, and they want to see, well, you know, if you really believe this, show me. Okay, that's a reference point. Okay, so here, here's another way of looking at it. Being born again is determined as valid in your life on the basis of your love walk. Hallelujah. So uh, you might have, you know, gotten as far in your testimony to others as telling them that you've been born again. What's the difference with you? Well, I've been born again. And you rightly placed the credit with Jesus rather than taking it yourself and saying, well, I, I just learned how to do that. No, that's not it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But you, you learned to give him the credit and therefore your testimony expanded to include the fact that they too can be born again. Okay, but if they see that you're not acting on it, then that whole line of, of conversation is brought to a st standstill. Okay, last little statement here. Your testimony as a believer is predicated on your love walk. So what happens with you, see, you're, you're out here and like Fred's doing, Fred is walking, I wish he would do, do it on his own, but maybe that's what will happen with the next generation of Fred. Praise the Lord. I like his red heart. No, that's Ephesians chapter 36, a new heart. How many of you are saved? Get your, get your hand up in the air. Okay, you've got the new heart. It's a heart of flesh rather than a heart of stone. 
So when you realize, wow, you know, things are not going that well with me, you start to call out. And when your voice registers in heaven, then God moves and boom, you're relit. I want to show that to you in, in your own Bible so you'll know where it is. If you would go with me, 1 John uh, chapter 1, 1 John 1, 9. This, is, this ought to be, be in every believer's toolkit. So you're moving through life. You know you're not perfect. You know, you, 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 you're washed in the blood. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. But you realize that, that while I still, I'm vulnerable with this temper that I've got. And, and I know that Sister Sally can get me riled up. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure in my tool bag that I carry along some help. Okay, so this is the biggest help that you can get. Uh, it's called the blood of Jesus. All right, 1 John 1, 9, he says, If you confess your sins, now in the same passage he, he says to you, but if you say you don't have sin, well then we got another kind of a problem. Now you're lying. He said it, not me. But there, there is a, there's a, a disorder, a thinking disorder called narcissism, which there's a whole category of people that are identifiable by their behavior in society that they can never do anything wrong, which is another way of saying they have never admitted the possibility that they could be or are wrong. Hallelujah. You know, so here, just to loosen you up a little bit and get rid of that, you know, what you ought to do is admit that God sees right through you. He already knows what your weaknesses are and what your strengths are. And he's not upset about your weaknesses. He just wants you to call on him. Let him be your strength, which is also in your tool bag. Hallelujah. Remember uh, how David got together those five smooth stones, put them in the bag, carried them with him, then got out of his sling and started getting things wound up? Yeah, and he brought Goliath down. Well, that's what you're going to have to do to bring Goliath down in your own life. You're going to have to get armed with the gospel of Jesus Christ and use what's in the tool bag to deal with Goliath. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, nowhere in there does it say there is any possibility of him not doing what he is promising that he would do. And here's the reason why. Because that particular promise is written in blood. It's a covenant promise. All you have to do is bring it, bring it up. And all heaven comes to a halt. Oh, wow. Jesus, one of your kids is down there calling on your name. Everything comes to a stop. Angels get up on their feet. They're ready to go on your behalf. And he's just listening for the next thing you say. Now, you could say the wrong thing. Like you didn't do it or, I, you know, or uh, I did it, but I didn't really mean it. That's not the answer. See, if you confess what you did, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of all sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Yeah, double talk doesn't work in heaven. Just go ahead and admit it. Now, that will loosen you up. You know, there, there's some people that are just kind of not pliable. Praise the Lord. And, and they go through a lot of grief while they're trying to prove they're right. Then at the end, they find out, well, I'm not right. 
wasn't right then and haven't been right since. So loosen up. Get used to asking for his help. Yeah, the blood of Jesus is the only answer that you've got against mistakes that you make, sin that you conduct. Now, that, that word comportment uh, is, is a good word because it's, it's the word that is in the strongest concordance that helps to, to describe the lifestyle involved in walking. So you're, you can walk in faith, you can walk in love, you can walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit is actually used more often in the New Testament than any of the rest of them. So, but it includes, walking in the Spirit includes walking in love. So what, what's going to happen with you, hopefully, uh, like Fred, I, I'm, I can't do both at once, but we're going to simulate him walking, okay? So I, I'm, I'm walking in love. And I, I'm going around here and, oh, gee, there's Sister Sally right there. You know, she's kind of expecting me, waiting on me. What, what, am I going to stop walking? No, I'm going to keep walking in love. And I'm going to walk right by Sister Sally. I'm not going to get ugly. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to expose myself to her derision. You know people like that? I do. Bunch of them. <laughs> Hallelujah. But even as, that, that's a good expression too, that you ought to put in your tool bag. Because Jesus was able to do all that. See, it's even as he did it already. So if he already did it, you and I can definitely walk in it. I can walk in his steps. Wherever he puts his feet, I can go. Because he's already done it. He's my forerunner. Hallelujah. God is good. Okay, so I'm going to ask you if you would please stand to your feet. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah, that loosening up is really important because you've got to be able and willing to admit the fact that there's a possibility that you're going to need him. Hallelujah, that's all it is involved. You need him. Every believer needs him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, so uh, this is going to go out to uh, the entire group of people that are also watching. But uh, just for everybody that's in this room, if you find yourself in a darker part of your life and you can't seem to get out of it, uh, then what we, we can do, we can just simply show you the way, okay, and you can act on it yourself and walk right out of the, the prison that Satan put you in. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay, so, uh, but by, by doing that, you will need to admit the possibility that you might have done something wrong to bring all this on your own head. Hallelujah. So I'm going to take authority over the devil in my life, but you're going to have to take authority over the devil in your life. Hallelujah. Okay, so uh, I realize this is a holiday weekend, but this is a great way to start the holiday. So if you say... Well, you know, I, 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 I think I've got one of those weaknesses like you described. And the Apostle Paul confessed and admitted that he had one. And it, it was about all of his relatives. You know, they were the ones that were chasing him around all over the world and trying to really cause trouble for him. Praise the, ultimately, they're the ones that got him locked into prison twice. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There are people that don't like Christians. They don't like you. And remember, they think you're vulnerable. But what they don't know is love never fails. So actually, 
Asking Jesus to forgive you is a love step. It's the love walk. Because you got a lot more that you need to do and you don't need to be buttonholed by some little problem that has never been cleansed out of your life. A behavior problem. Okay, so if you've got one of those and you say, well, I want to get rid of this thing. You don't have to say it to me. Hey, you know, I'm not Jesus. But you, but you do need to come down here and confess before God that you need help. So if you need help, come and stand here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, I've probably got more than one weakness, but I, I know, you know, when, when uh, people contest me, uh, it causes my flesh to rise up. This, this is a confession on my part. It causes my flesh to rise up, and, I, and you know, a retaliation is the most natural thing to do, but I, I'm working on not doing the retaliation. Hallelujah. So that, that's at least one that I know of. And so what the Lord talks to me about is how to anticipate the enemy trying to box me into a place where I feel like, you know, people can just abuse me. I'm not the only one like that. Hallelujah. That's better. Thank you, Jesus. God is good, isn't he? I'm glad I came to church on this holiday weekend. Yeah, Pastor Cherie is... Well, she's already doing it, but, uh, you know, we got this giant roast, and we're going to eat it. Yeah, she, she's going to do the cooking, and, uh, you know, all the kids, grandkids, everybody's coming, and there's going to be ample opportunity to act on what I'm preaching about right now, I guarantee you. You sound like you've been there. <laughs> All right, so, but you notice how I'm able to identify the place? Okay, that's what I'm saying to you, and that's what the Apostle Paul was doing in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. He was talking about the place where he had gotten trapped, actually. Uh, you'd have to really study it out because uh, people have interpreted it the wrong way and took the power out of it, blamed it all on God, and God didn't have anything to do with it, but the Apostle Paul had a family. And they were, you know, trying to get back at him. So they lashed out at him. Hallelujah. Is that too close to home for you? You probably have a family. Yeah, I saw that, uh, yeah. That face. Yeah, I've got one. Hallelujah. How are you? It's good to see you. You're a head taller again. Every time I see him, he's a head taller. Yeah, look at it. Look at it. He, he's almost two heads taller than you now. <laughs> he just keeps growing. He's like a, well, he's not like a weed. He, he's a, not a tear. A tree. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So I, I want to lead you in this uh, confession of faith for forgiveness. This is not the last time you'll ever do this. In fact, my, my belief, my prayer is that you'll take this as a tool, take it with you. And every time you get in one of these corners... You're going to ask Jesus to forgive you. 
rather than trying to prove you're right and blaming it on other people and becoming a victim and all that other, you know, I, I mean, all that's going to do is bind you up. Hallelujah. You got kids. Uh, yeah, you're believing for the kids now. That, that's what the, the Lord was showing me. It's not just your health. It's your kids. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. Okay, so I want to lead you in this simple confession. Okay, uh, say this with me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all sin. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And that's, you know, so remember uh, Peter was asking Jesus about, well, somebody does something against me, how many times in a day do I forgive him? So Jesus said, well, uh, I believe it was Peter came back and said, well, 70 times 7? And that, that's 490 times. And, and the conversation stopped at that point, and, uh, which means that it might go beyond 490. Hallelujah, you, you, yeah, you might uh, get a sister Sally. <laughs> and she might want to extract something out of you. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, all you got to do is just keep the love walk going. Walk right through the obstacle. Be kind, patient, gentle, long-suffering, merciful. Act the whole thing out because it's your nature and walk right past the offense. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. Okay, so uh, while you're all standing, I want to lead you in a, this also a confession of your faith. Praise the Lord. Virtually every person in the room a moment ago uh, raised your hand to say you were saved, and I, I believe that's the case. If you want to remove distance between you and the Lord, just confess this with us. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. Lord Jesus, I also call you the Lord of glory. I confess that you're the King of kings, the Lord of glory. Lord Jesus, I ask you, come into my life as my Savior. Wash me in your precious blood. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to hear and receive your word today. I covenant with you that I will act on what you say. I'll act on your word and be freed by it in Jesus' name.